lovely October morning. Meeting Mr. Oliver down there at Buckler's Hard. Hopefully he's in a good mood. We shall see. <laughs> I knew once I told you it was going to be bailing. I thought I know exactly what he'll do. He'll get down there early and he'll try and do it. So I yeah, thought, I can't let him do that. So. Kind-hearted I am, but I regret it now. Yeah, Chris, you do. What a nonsense! Right. Ready? What a lovely one this is. A few people on their bags. Yeah. Sunshine there. Just lift the, the boy up to move it. So he said, but we've got the bigger barge coming in the water soon and uh, we'll do it then. Seeping and smelling of the. Uh, ah, you need joke about. You've got two of them three there. Three of them. Three of them. My yeah. goodness, you need three of them on this well, boat. Excessive use, if you don't mind you me saying. Regularly run out, and I regularly run out. So. Yeah, true. Three joke for his toilet. Uh, mind you, we've had some bad experiences in that toilet, haven't we? new VHF handheld radio. We shall ask him why he needed a new handheld VHF radio in a second. Hang on. What are you doing Dave? Putting a lanyard on my new handheld. What? Why have you got a new handheld? Uh, product. product placement requires sponsorship so I'll not say too much but we, was, we haven't been sponsored by anybody, we don't do that sort of thing. No, we'd like to be, so uh, come on now. So, this is supposed to be waterproof floating, this one. And um, the family bought it for me about five years ago. And while I was out with my grandson a couple of months ago, it fell over the, uh, another heron there, by the way, being blessed with herons this morning. It fell overboard the dinghy, and it was about five minutes before we, we realised it's tied on. And the waterproof didn't work. So I rang the manufacturers and underneath this battery pack here, which you can take out as a serial number, when I gave them the serial number, they said it's out of warranty. So I was stuffed, but actually here's why it didn't work. I don't know if you can close up. The little finger button there's got a hole in it. So I bought this new one, got it for 50 quid cheaper. It actually came from Germany. Anyway, the only bit of that story I was after was the fact that he dropped his, his uh, VHF in, in the water. You ready, Skip? Do you want to keep it a little bit full so you can see under it while we're going down the river? Yeah. D, I, you, you know how bad my... Um, yeah, bad. No, you, you know how bad my... Bad? Hull is, all oh, that oxidation. That's not bad, that's very, very bad. I bought a blue hull and it's sort yeah. of grey... It's like a cataract. Yeah, it's like cloudy. Misty, cloudy. It's really bad. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I got some professional guys to come in and buff it and scour it down. Is that the one I did? No, this is about two years ago. I, I lifted the boat, got them in, Spent hundreds of pounds on it, and um, within six months it was back no different at oh, all. I, 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 I don't look after it very well, I know that, but nevertheless it was. Wait, could you say that again? I don't look after it very well. Yeah. Anyway, I've sorted it. Have you? I've sorted it. Come on. I've. It looks like a new boat. Well, we need some evidence. 
I'll show you some evidence. Well, you're going to put a picture up on here. Yeah. I show, yeah, I'll show you All some right. evidence. But I'll tell you what I used. What? Floor polish. Industrial floor polish. You got to be joking. No, floor polish. Well, why? Why well, I've seen a couple of riot ups. Hang on a minute, we need to jive the Jenny. Let me move this car. I'm in manual cars, honestly. So I saw a, an, a post in one of the magazines. Somebody had used industrial floor polish and this floor polish leaves a thick polymer on the uh, on the surface so what do you and it's transformed it mate and you just literally put it on like with, with your sander with a cloth on it or what sand it down and then I, I use a sponge or a cloth just to apply a thin layer let it dry do it four times I'll put a video up and I'll show it all right now, while he's talking about his five pound tin of industrial floor polish, I'd like to show you my new glasses, folks. These are a few hundred quid. I got very tight prescriptions, very focused, so I have to have prescription sunglasses. Well, what they've been able to do, and they can do for sailors now, special polarized coating, which is not new. What they can do is expand the peripheral vision for you. And I've got about 20, 20% more peripheral vision. So these, beautiful. Lovely, lovely day, October, who'd believe it? Dave, what do you think Andy's doing in... Uh... Andy, come on, what do you where think? are you? I bet you've got your boat no. out, have you? No, it's sunny, Dave. He won't, he means no, but is he out, the out the water. No, but he out the water? I don't know. Dry land, probably. Um, have you checked the... Either that or it's raining. Yeah, I have. It's two oh. metres low and it's about sort of two or three o'clock. I'm a bit nervous, folks, because... Um, We've got this new thing going on. We're trying to save money because he's spending a lot of polish just at the minute. And we've got, last time I did that beautiful three cheese toaster, you'll remember, we're cooking our own lunches. He says he's been preparing since late last night for lunch. I'm a wee bit nervous about it. Homemade dough without any yogurt, without any, what's the other stuff you put in a yeast. dough? Yeast. No yeast, flatbreads. Got some um, squeaky cheese and cheese and, and bacon and uh, brie. Ooh. Sounding good already. Better than a cheese sandwich, that's for sure. <laughs> Gonna jive in a minute, you stay down. plan Andy? Well, I don't know if it's an age thing. It will be that, whatever it is. <laughs> you know, whatever the question, right, that's the answer. To that. we, actually got, we actually got a confession from you without any prompting. That means it's deeply held conviction inside your what, personality what, what confession? about how badly you treat your hull, your yeah, phone, yeah, and yeah, cleaning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um, the confession from me is as I get to think about a day sailing, I don't even think about where I'm going or what the weather is really. I just sort of turn up and go. That's awful. No, no, I, I'm the, no I do the same. But you, I'm a little bit better than you at that. But you came up with the idea, uh, which I was ashamed of myself, ashamed of myself, because I'd done no thought, no consideration and no care. In fact, I didn't give a fig about where we went because I knew you were cooking lunch. That's all that mattered. But anyway, we're going up the Hamble again. This time we're going to show folks. Actually, we've never taken them there, have we? Yeah, we have. We did uh, that pub. Did we do the pub there? Yeah. What on video? First one we ever did. It's called it? the Elephant or something. No, the. Uh, what is it called? What's it called? Sailors, Jolly Sailor. Oh, is that where we? The Jolly Sailor. We did that. Did yeah, that. but I'm yeah. thinking about that little 
funny restaurant on almost like a floating barge by the pontoon. Yeah, that's there. that's the elephant boatyard. Yeah. Yeah, we did that as well. So we've been up there twice. But did we actually do the restaurant on that boat yard, on the barge? We yeah. Did. Okay, well that's roughly where we're headed, folks. Sorry about that long-winded uh, explanation, counter-explanation and excuse and confession all rolled into one. But um, it's the 20 minutes of this video gone already. We're going to, uh, we're going to hang, either hang a hook up there or moor up there, have lunch, and then we're going to explore in my tender, which is really well equipped at the moment. <laughs> it's got two broken floorboards and it keeps going down, but apart from that, we're ready for it. So you can't take the boat any further than Burzeldon because of a low bridge yeah, that's true. and the shallows. We've so we're going to explore. There, no, I've never been up there. I've never taken a tender up there at all. You can go, you can go all the way to Botley. But we won't go that we far today. We have got today. to get back to there, haven't we? Yeah. yeah. They built, Nelson had a flagship, right? Yeah. Nelson won a very famous battle, one of his most famous battles was the, the Battle, battle of, of Burzeldon. No, the Battle of Copenhagen. Oh, Copenhagen, yeah. He uh, destroyed Copenhagen. The fleet of British ships. It's an amazing ships, his, story, that one. His flagship was, um, yeah, do you remember it from the Sharp books? Yeah. Um, he, his flagship that he sailed at the Battle of Copenhagen was called the Elephant and it was built at the Elephant Bowyard. Ah, okay. 76 gun, uh, big old thing. Yeah. They've been building boats use, there ever since. Yeah. But he never used floor polish on his boat. Yeah, he might have. But he wouldn't have got it as cheaply as I got it. So your um, sleeveless top down there, yeah. barber top. Um, it's trying to bring us back, isn't it? Keep an eye on it. And uh, it reminded me that Rachel, my wife Rachel, I bless her heart, she's at home when we've got diarrhoea. Oh. She liked me for saying that. Thanks. And I'm um, cooking my lunch. No, she's not, I am. No, but the same thing. Yeah. No. Anyway, yeah, that's put me off for lunch now. But I didn't carry on, as she was going to say. So anyway, Rachel said to me the other day, actually I got a pair of, in fact these two, look, they got a hole in them. Oh yeah, see that? Yeah. She said, why don't I trim them and you can wear cut off jeans as shorts. What do you reckon to that then? I think it's a brilliant idea. It's the campus thing I've ever heard. Or it's not a chance. Shallow is just to say that if, if we run aground, the skipper today is we strong of it. skipper today doesn't even check the charts. He's just relying on his uh, depth alarm. I suppose I do know this area a bit better because I used to do more up here. I used to be birthed up here, so I have suggested where we should go but I just want to make sure that the understanding of the he responsibility says that because last time when it was his responsibility I did recall we went to ground twice or touched the ground twice at least. When was that then? Yeah uh, I can't remember was it? We did I remember doing it. No, it might have been that Port Sale Castle wasn't it? Anyway, in my defence, I'd like to blame Apple because my navigation currently is on iPad and it won't charge for some reason, so I've just got red battery symbol. What do we think of that then from the old yacht master? When was the last time you looked at a paper chart, me? Uh, not long ago, actually. But when I was tidying up, I looked at one. And um, it's quite a nice thing, isn't it? It's a lovely thing. It's a thing of beauty. It is strange, isn't it? I'd be interested in what viewers think and do themselves. If we go on a long journey, we always use Navionics on the uh, iPad and iPhone, but we always have the charts out, and we always look at the charts, look at the pilot books. Not our hourly fix. Yeah. Do we? Yeah, well, I do. Yeah, sure. Good. Especially cross-channel. But when you're in home waters, this... I wouldn't say it's casual because I always respect the sea, but there's a more casual approach towards charts and navigation. Quite a few boats out there. I can't remember in October this busy before, whether it's a COVID, people are just desperate to get out. Catching up, yeah.
Warm enough? Yeah, I was. My hands just got to cold, but yeah, warm enough. Anyway, we're sailing into the uh, Hambon River. The Hambon was originally known as the Hamel. And Hamel is a word, an old Saxon word that means crooked. So they wonder whether it's named after being a meandering river, but it isn't meandering much. They think actually the name comes from an old Saxon thane called Hamel, who used to be based near the river. The River Hamble is just over six miles long. It starts just north of Botley and travels down to Burzeldon and then finally exits into Southampton Water. There are four villages. Hamble or Rice, an ancient village, is on the western side and Warsash, where the harbour master is based, is on the eastern side. You can see the harbour master's office just here, this black and white tower building. We're coming up to Hamble or Rice now. It's, as I say, it's an ancient village, Neolithic and Roman finds have been unearthed at this place. In the 700s, the Venerable Bede, in his ecclesiastical history, wrote about the tides. He says, the tides meet and oppose one another beyond the mouth of the river Hamel, which runs into that narrow sea from the land of Jutes. So you can see even in those days, the Hamel and its river were considered noteworthy because of its double high tide. In 877, three Viking ships took refuge here after a storm. They returned several times for their normal business. The Black Prince Edward, son of the remarkable Edward III, secured seven ships and 117 mariners for the famous Battle of Crecy from the Hamel. By comparison, Portsmouth only contributed five ships and 96 mariners. You can see the pink ferries here from the Hamble to Warsash. This ferry line has been operating since Henry VIII's time in the 1500s. Upriver are the two villages of Swanwick and Burzeldon. Burzeldon houses Elephant's Boatyard, where we're going today. Henry V's Grace Diad was the largest warship of its time, and that was built here in 1418. It also lies sunken here as well. You can just about see the remains north of the bridge today at a low tide. The Elephant Boatyard built Nelson's flagship, the Elephant, and they've been building wooden boats here to this day. By the way, Henry VIII built a castle at the entrance just here in 1543 as part of the Solent defences, but it's gone today, though you can still see the foundations. This is our lunchtime setting. Sad to say, we um, can't take the tender up the Merzelin River, which is beyond this bridge, so we're as close to the bridge as we can get. But apparently, this is a sail training mooring. We've got to be ready to uh, leave at a moment's notice. Very helpful folks in the Deacon's Marina here, but the marina is full and uh, we've got to be ready to depart. Very strong currents apparently here. So I've been uh, flipping through my mind the exit strategy. So we might wind the boat to face into the tide which is flooding from that direction. Very light winds at the moment, but the winds are also on the stern. So tide and wind on the stern. We could reverse out or we could wind the boat and put the bow out. We shall see. Like that. Okay, that's coming. Oh, 
pleasant culinary experience. I'm best to call with Josh. Now, I'm only the uh, assistant cameraman, usually the grip around these plants, but the cameraman has actually decided to cook. And here we have rather wonderfully smelling flatbread about to be uh, flipped or Just wind it up a little bit. Woggled. Well, here's the end result, folks. Um, chef is already stuck in. We've got some hummus with olive oil, homemade hummus and here we have flatbread about to be put into effectively a wrap with bacon, onion, hummus and halloumi. Great stuff.